In this video, we're going to take a look at making an ESP01 simpler to use by combining it with an ATtiny85. This will give us more I.O. and crude parallel processing. The ESP has two pins, but they're very picky about their initial states for switching between boot modes. This can be worked around, but we don't have to bother if we defer all of our I.O. to another system. That's where the ATtiny85 comes in. The Tiny has six I.O. pins, at least one of which I use for serial communication. Since we're using a separate processor, we can pull the I.O. pins at any frequency we want. Take our time to aggregate and smooth the data and have it ready for consumption without the other processor having to know about the whole process or run it. This is a great way to get around upsetting the ESP watchdog timer and a nice way to defer things like animation or playing music to another process. Let's take a look at how I powered everything. I used an 18650 LiPo battery that I pulled out of an old laptop and a TP4056 board to prevent overcharging and over-discharging. The voltage range we should get out of a typical 18650 cell should be between 2.7 and 4.2 volts. According to the documentation, this falls slightly outside of the safe operating range for the ESP01, but so far I haven't had any problems. This range works just fine for the ATtiny85. Given the fact that we can run both of these off one cell, this makes this a good setup for small, rechargeable, Wi-Fi enabled portable projects that don't require a ton of I.O. or speed. Oof, this awful graphic shows my layout for all the components. Hopefully you can still follow how I connected everything. First we have power coming from the battery to the charge controller. Then it gets safely distributed out to the Tiny, the LEDs, and the ESP. Next we have the ground wired up in pretty much the same way. For serial communication, we connect pin 0 from the Tiny to the RX pin on the ESP, and pin 1 from the Tiny to the TX pin on the ESP. Finally, pin 4 on the Tiny goes to the data in of the NeoPixels which are chained together, and pin 2 goes to the buzzer. For this particular project, the Tiny controls the output of the two NeoPixels and the buzzer. I don't actually have to send any information back to the ESP so that could have saved me an extra pin from RIO. The ESP will send messages to the Tiny. Like I said before, the Tiny can manage things like color fading, playing notes, or even whole tunes, and the ESP can just tell it what it wants without ever having to manage any of it. Actually, working with these two microcontrollers can be a challenge if you're used to the convenience of something like an Arduino Uno. Neither have their own USB interfaces. So the first thing you'll need to do is get an FTDI or a USB ASP interface to communicate with them. I'm currently using both. Before we get started, make sure you have the appropriate drivers installed for your FTDI or USB ASP programmers. In order to program the ATtiny85, you'll first need to install the boards package. You can find that by going into the boards manager and searching for ATtiny85, then installing the library by David A. Mellis. Next, you'll need to select the ATtiny board, set the clock speed to 8 MHz internal, and then change the processor to the ATtiny85. Because most tinies come set at 1 MHz, we'll have to change it to 8 MHz by burning a new bootloader onto it. If you're using the USB ASP programmer for this, you'll have to short the slow SCK jumper in order to slow down the burning process for 1 MHz. Once the new bootloader is burned, it will be running at 8 MHz internal, and you won't need this jumper shorted. Now programming the ATtiny85 is pretty much just like any other Arduino. You will also need to install the board package for the ESP8266 microprocessors if you haven't already. This can be done with the board manager like before. Once you've done that, select the generic ESP8266 board and you're ready to set up hardware for programming. As we've mentioned already, in order to program the ESP, aside from having the power and serial connected, you'll also need the GPIO pin pulled low and the CHPD pin pulled high. You will also need to reset it yourself for programming to start, so I suggest adding a way to pull reset low like a button. Now that we understand how to actually program these things, let's talk about the code for this project. The majority of the code on the ESP01 is the amazing ESP8266D author project by Stefan Kremser. I just cleaned up the debug logging, so the only serial communications was my code to control the Tiny. The ATtiny85 has a loop that receives instructions to set LED colors and play tones, 
If the new LED colors don't match the current ones, it fades to the new ones at a speed which is also changeable. It gets the messages by reading incoming serial data. If it finds any, it tries to break off chunks of data in this format. Notice the message delimiters marking the start, perimeter, value, and end of a message. The code knows what to do with different parameters and their values, like setting the first LED's red value or playing the A note for 100 milliseconds. So that's it. Hopefully this video will help you better understand how to get started with these microcontrollers and how to make them work together.